shall not the son of a bear state of Massachusetts nor a state of New York by saying that the people of those states will declare our helpless impotency as a nation to attend to our own business? My fellow citizens, great statistics indicate that this country is in a state of unexampled prosperity. I believe that the majority of the plain people of the United States will, day in and day out, make fewer mistakes in governing themselves than any smaller class or body of men, no matter what their training, will make in trying to govern them. Who are the people? They are not alone, the unfortunate and the weak. They are the weak and the strong, the poor and the rich, and the many who are neither. There are some dark pages in the history of the white men's dealings with the Indians, and many parts of the record are stained with the greed and avarice of those who have thought only of their own profit. My countrymen, there isn't anything the matter with the world's civilization except that humanity is viewing it through a vision impaired in a cataclysmal war. I want the people of America to be able to work less for the government and more for themselves. I want them to have the rewards of their own industry. It will support the new administration in every measure which will protect, will promote public welfare. It must and will be vigilant in opposing those which are harmful. It's freedom of every person to worship God in his own way, everywhere in the world. A short time ago, an American airplane dropped one bomb on Hiroshima and destroyed its usefulness to the enemy. That bomb has more power than 20,000 tons of TNT. We yet realize that America's leadership and prestige depend not merely upon our unmatched material progress, riches, and military strength, but on how we use our power in the interest of world peace and human betterment. Into an important strategic base, by the presence of these large, long-range, and clearly offensive weapons of sudden mass destruction constitutes an explicit threat to the peace and security of all the Americas. Every country that I know in that area that is familiar with what's happening thinks it's absolutely essential that Uncle Sam keep her word and stay there until we can find an honorable peace the thousands of volunteer workers in state after state who did far beyond the call of duty in helping us to the victory that was won. With a comprehensive plan to make our country independent of foreign sources of energy by 1985. Such a program was long overdue. We have become increasingly at the mercy of others for the fuel on which our entire economy runs. Human identity is no longer defined by what one does, but by what one owns. This is not a message of happiness or reassurance, but it is the truth and it is a warning. General Secretary Gorbachev, if you seek peace, if you seek prosperity for the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, if you seek liberalization, come here to this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate. Today, tomorrow, and into the next century, our nation is the enduring dream of every immigrant who ever set foot on these shores and the millions still struggling to be free. This nation, this idea called America, was and always will be a new world. I will never forget the parents of children with autism and other serious conditions who told me on the campaign trail that they couldn't afford health care, 
and couldn't qualify their children for Medicaid unless they quit work and starved or got a divorce. Good evening. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. The victims were in airplanes or in their offices, secretaries, businessmen and women, military and federal workers, moms and dads, friends and neighbors. My fellow Americans, tonight I want to speak to you about what the United States will do with our friends and allies to degrade and ultimately destroy the terrorist group known as ISIL. As Commander-in-Chief, my highest priority is the security of the American people. My original instinct was to pull out, and historically, I like following my instincts. But all my life, I've heard that decisions are much different when you sit behind the desk in the Oval Office.